Hey guys, coming to you live from my kitchen tonight. This is Sherry Ann Richardson from experimentalhomesteader.com and we're going to make breaded baked pork chops with a uh, sage harvest maple flavoring. So what I've done, I've just taken some breadcrumbs and you can do this with the pre-bought breadcrumbs. You can toast some bread and just crunch it up or you can take old stale bread and you can chop it up and put it in your oven and dehydrate it a little bit. You could probably use a food dehydrator too and then just crunch it up. I've used my immersion blender and this did take a little bit of work. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I had to turn my bottle like this to be able to use this item and chop it up. Now it did come with some different blades but I didn't change those out. Um, I have my pork chops on my paper towels. Like I said, I always do this to absorb any extra blood because you want to get that out. It does help to tenderize the meat. I have center cut pork chops here tonight and I'm sorry that I'm here alone and I don't have anyone to move the camera. So um, I'm just going to do the best I can. This is what my pork chops look like. And I'm just going to put them on this plate. Um, let me go get a paper towel. A little bit of that mess came through on the plate and I don't want that so like I said I'm just gonna take my pork chop um, I'm gonna go ahead and use a paper towel I'm gonna put it on my plate just like this and this is actually a uh, harvest maple and sage seasoning pre-made that I bought that I'm going to be using very good if you have not tried it I think we got this at TJ Maxx um, you get a nice big packet like this. I usually use a spoon. Um, that way I'm not putting my fingers in this and making a horrible mess. So anyway, I'll put my spoon in. I'll get, oh, maybe about that much. I want to just lightly sprinkle one side of this pork chop here. So about, about like that. And then I'm going to take some of my breadcrumbs and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to sprinkle them on. Now one thing that I learned when you press this into the meat, which we're going to do in a minute, you do not want to rub it. Just press it very gently. Okay, so that's what my pork chop looks like. And I'm just going to take a spoon. That's all I'm doing. I'm not rubbing. I'm just pressing to try to make sure some of this adheres to this pork chop. Okay, and then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, only this time I'm just gonna sprinkle some seasoning on the spoon, again, about the same amount. Okay, sprinkle this over like that. I'll probably end up with a little less seasoning on this side, as you can see, because we don't want to over season. Again, I'm just going to sprinkle a few breadcrumbs on. I do have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. Okay. All right. And this is what this looks like. Okay, I'm going to take this off of here. And yes, some of my breadcrumbs are going to fall off. As you can see, it's going to be very lightly breaded. But this is okay. I'm going to set this on my pan. I have covered my pan with some parchment paper. Now, I don't like, hi Stacy, I don't like to throw my old pans away because that's stuff in the landfill and they do get old. And so what I do is I just use parchment paper or I use those uh, silicon liners if you got them. Okay, so again, I have my second pork chop just going to sprinkle. This is a bigger pork chop, so I may use a little more seasoning on it. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to. Okay, again, looks just about like that. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle my breadcrumbs. And any excess breadcrumbs that I have like this, I'm just going to toss outside because the birds and things will peck around and get this. I Sometimes I give them to my chickens too. OK, 
Okay, so again, just pressing this in, do not rub the meat. Whatever you do, because that's you don't want to do that. Okay, as you can see, when I turned it this time, um, lots of breadcrumbs left. But that's okay. I'm going to repeat the process with the seasoning. I'm going to crush some of this up in the spoon, because it's... Um, Sometimes my seasonings draw moisture, and there are food grade uh, packs, gel packs that you can buy for that. I do have some, and it looks like I may have to put some in here. Okay, so again, I'm just going to sprinkle this on top. I can be pretty generous now because I know I've got some excess. Um, the stuff that has not touched the meat, I can put in a freezer bag and put in the freezer and save it that way. Okay, so... There we go. Again, I'm just gonna pick this up. I'm gonna put it over here. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this mess. All right. Um, clean my stove top up a little bit. Set this over there. Now I'm gonna put these in the 350 degree oven for about 40 minutes. And again, for those of you that did not see this, this is a harvest maple and sage seasoning. Like I said, I believe that this particular one, yes, this one did come from TJ Maxx. Um, wonderful place to find some unusual or really expensive prices, or yeah, prices, spices, sorry, at very reasonable prices. So I shop TJ Maxx an awful lot. Um, okay. And I have about this much of my breadcrumb mixture left. So like I said, I can just um, add some, you know, add that to a freezer bag market and toss it back in the freezer for next time. I'm going to take four small sage leaves, and these did come from my garden, just to add another element of flavor. I'm going to sprinkle these on the top here, only on one side. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh ground pepper, again only on one side. Okay, I'm doing about four turns per chop. These are really thick chops if you didn't notice that. And I'm going to add a little bit of applewood smoked salt. You can smoke your own salt if you have a smoker, but if you don't, hi Elizabeth. Um, like I said, another item I found at TJ Maxx. Not adding a lot here, just a sprinkling. Okay. All right. And to go with this tonight, we're going to have some uh, Mediterranean sugar snap peas, and we're going to have my uh, creamy bow tie pasta. So here is what these look like, ready to go in the oven. See, I am preheated now. So I'm going to pop these in bottom shot. Oops, forgot one secret trick. Hold on. secret trick is called spray butter. Um, I am going to spray the top of these pork chops very lightly with just a little bit of spray butter. All right, there we go, guys. I know you probably can't see that on camera. Now I'm going to put them on the bottom rack of my oven. I'm going to set the timer for 40 minutes. And we're going to get busy with the rest of our food. Give me just a second. Okay, I need to keep the sage here. Um, I don't know how many of you have been on Facebook today, but I happened to go to the store and buy some Parmesan cheese to go with supper tonight. Come home, get on Facebook, and lo and behold, guess what, guys? Parmesan cheese has wood in it. It's not supposed to. I've made plenty of it myself right here in my kitchen. But they have actually caught some manufacturers putting wood in their cheese. And it's not just Parmesan. Um, they put other cheeses in the Parmesan and as a filler to make it cheaper for them to produce. So I looked because I was really concerned and was not going to use the Parmesan I bought and was going to take it back. But the brand that I got, luckily, was not mentioned. Unfortunately, 
Kraft is one of the companies that puts fillers in their Parmesan cheese. So you got to be careful what you buy. Um, what can I say? Uh, companies are looking for any way they can to make a profit. Um, anyway, very unhappy about that. Um, okay, I'm going to get... Let's see what pan do I want. Um, I guess I'll use my Ozeri pan. Okay, got my Ozeri pan and I've got my pasta pan. I love stainless steel pans. If I can't use cast iron, stainless steel. And I don't like the non-stick. Um, they're just a pain. I'm going to put some water in this. Uh -huh. And again, I'm sorry about being out of camera. There's just no way I can bring the camera with me by myself. Okay. So there's my pan for my pasta. Let me grab my peas. Okay. For those of you that want to cook a little gourmet, but don't have the patience, the time, whatever, we have found this product. Uh, we found this at Meyer. Okay, this is Man's Snap Pea Sensations. These are Mediterranean style peas. They are absolutely wonderful. Okay. Um, they come with the seasoning packets that you need. And then all you have to do is take these over to your sink, wash them off, and snap the ends off. So let me do that. If you guys have any questions for me, go ahead and put those in the comments. I am watching as I'm doing this. Okay, and then I'm going to, I have washed these in the bag. I'm going to spread them out so I can see um, what these look like. Okay, you can also eat these cold, but I like them hot. Okay. Now... And it also, these normally would only take one to two minutes. I like my peas a little bit softer. So I'm just pinching the ends off. Um, just little tiny pinches. You don't need to, you know, take a lot of these off. Just, just the edge pieces. Sometimes you'll have a string or two. Um, not a big deal. And I actually like the sugar snap peas. A lot better. I was going to do stir fry tonight and then I went to Meyer, and I was walking past and I saw these and like I said I've had them before. really like them and they were on sale this week guys. So I skipped the stir fry and went with this recipe. Um, Jeff said I thought we was having stir fry tonight and I said well don't take me to the store because you never know what you might come home with. <laughs> And I'm being very serious. Um, so, it won't be much longer now until I'm actually growing some sugar snap peas in the garden. I don't normally grow the green ones. I do have green ones, but they're not my choice pick. I like the blue and the yellow. And part of it is because they're a different color. Part of it is because the bugs just don't pester them as much. So, but like I said, this is really easy. Um, if you're not sure of the amount of seasoning, this is all pre-done for you. And last night, um, I do my own seasonings for the Brussels sprouts. But Marsh actually sells, for those of you that are unsure, they sell in their uh, fresh produce se section, fresh Brussels sprouts with a seasoning packet already in them, complete instructions on them. So, um, that's another way, like I said, if you don't have time, and I certainly know what that's like, especially in the summer, it's really, you know, it doesn't take me long, the things that I cook, but it can be really hard to come in after you've spent all day outside, and, you know, I know it's the same way when you work a job. So, anyway, um, 
It's really quite a lot of peas here for this price. I will probably cook these about 10 minutes. I'll start them about the same time I do my pasta. So I'm watching my timer on the stove. I have 35 minutes left. And these little pieces of peas that I'm picking off, as well as the paper towel, are going to go in my compost pile. Um, so again, if you guys have questions, ask me. Um, almost done here. And I'm using a skillet instead of a pan because I want to do these really quick. I'm not using any type of water or anything. I'm just going to use um, a little bit of olive oil that's going to have a little bit of basil and garlic mixed in it. And then when I'm done, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan cheese over the top. Really good, guys. Really good. Um, like I said, I could, uh, you know, you could do this without the packet if you wanted. But sometimes it's just easier to do this. Okay, almost there. And these are the strings I was talking about. Sometimes you're going to... Oh, uh, <laughs> you're welcome, Stacy. Thank you. Ah, sometimes I do, Elizabeth. Um, these have a lot of strings on them, and I'm not sure why. And I don't like the strings. Um, but if you get these peas at just the peak of flavor, they are so sweet. And that's why I like growing my own, because I can kind of watch them. These are kind of fat, really. Um, this is more, this is more the thinner. You don't want those peas to fill out a whole lot. Um, okay, there we go. Because the, the fatter the peas get, the less sweet they're actually going to be. And, okay, so now I have my packet. Okay, this is what my peas and my skillet look like. So you can see there's quite a few there. Have my packet. Just going to cut it open. Okay. Make sure those are perfectly spread out. And I'm going to pour this over the top of these peas. Again, I'm sorry you guys can't see this real good. Um, I need an overhead camera that screws into a light bulb. But um, it is a matter of preference, yes. Um, I have not been able to find one. I've heard at all the blogger conferences. Oh, these have actual little places you can tear. I um, didn't know that or I wouldn't have had to grab my scissors. But um, I'm just trying to really get all of this out because I want that basil and garlic. Okay. Now, I'm going to get, what did I do with it? Um, okay, I don't know where it is. So I'm going to grab a different spatula. And I'm just going to, all I'm doing, I have no heat going right now. I'm just mixing this a little bit so that it's equally spread out when I do turn the uh, stove on. Okay, I have my Parmesan cheese packet. It's going to go on last. I have 31 minutes left. Okay. And we're going to get the bow tie pasta going, even though I know I'm probably way ahead of myself. Just going to turn that on. I'm going to get my stuff measured out. Uh, yes, olive oil, basil, and garlic are the spices. Yes. And then the Parmesan cheese goes on the top of it. I put mine on before I take it out of the skillet because Jeff doesn't like cheese. <laughs> and so this is my way of tricking him because he can't taste it. So if he doesn't see it, he doesn't know it's there. Um, awful, I know. But okay, my bow tie pasta recipe is on my website, but it is six ounces of bow tie pasta. Um, I just bought the Meyer brand because it was on sale. This is what it looks like for those of you that don't know. Just like little bow ties, just so cute. Um, I like my food to look cute. What can I say? Uh, two tablespoons of butter, a cup of heavy whipping cream, a cup of Parmesan cheese, don't get the stuff with the wood in it. Um, if you can't find... Oh, yes, I am busted. <laughs> he doesn't watch the videos anyway, so he'll never know. Um, 
But anyway, if you can't find Parmesan cheese or you don't have it on hand, you could really use any kind of cheese. It's just I'm making a, a white sauce, so I want the Parmesan cheese. Um, six sage leaves. Again, I'm going to use sage from my garden. You could use this fresh, but I'm using dried. Uh, salt, pepper, and a little bit of parsley. I can't find my parsley. I gave it to Jeff. Nice big jar like this, guys. Okay, big jar. And I handed it to him, and I said, put it away, and wow. <laughs> oh, I know. I've never heard of anybody not liking cheese, Elizabeth. And when he told me that, I was just like, <laughs> so, um, okay, let me get my measuring cups and everything else that I need. This is one recipe that I do measure out. Most of them I do not, as you probably know. Um. Okay, let me get a couple of these. All right, I'm gonna measure out my Parmesan cheese. I know there's a cup and a half in here. So, and I will probably end up using, hi Heather. Um, oh, I absolutely agree, Stacy. I love cheese and after what I read today, like I said about them putting wood as a filler in cheese, I mean, that's just, that is crazy. And, I am more and more wanting to really press to have my goats back this year so I can make my own cheese because making cheese is not difficult. It really isn't. I have a whole YouTube video on how to do it. Milk and vinegar. Now, if you're making different types of cheese like the Parmesan, you're going to need your cultures, but again, not difficult. Okay, if I can do this, anybody can do it. Trust me. Um, Okay, so I have my cup of cheese measured out, give or take. Um, go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to do a cup of heavy whipping cream, which I'm going to wait till a little closer. I am not going to measure. Yes, yeah, Stacy, I think I shared on my timeline the article about it, but they actually put wood in cheese. It's a filler. <laughs> That's a good one, Elizabeth. <laughs> I just think these companies are trying to be so cheap. You know, there was a big thing, um, I don't know how long ago it's been, but about companies calling their cheese um, Italian or Parmesan or the other one, I'm probably going to say it wrong, Romancio, and the Italians getting really upset because I can tell you it is a process to make cheese. You have to let it age and it does shrink down. Okay. And they're complaining because it takes a hundred gallons of milk to make 10 pounds of cheese. But if you're making Parmesan, you only get eight pounds of cheese out of that hundred gallon of milk. Okay. Um, I don't know about cows because I've never owned a cow. I can only imagine from my goats, but I can tell you, my goats made a heck of a lot of cheese for us, and I know that wasn't commercial production, but these companies that make cheese have the cows lined up. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. We're talking factory farms here, and that's where the milk is coming from. So we are talking hundreds and hundreds of cows producing milk to make this cheese and yet they're complaining and saying they can't make no money. We all know cheese is expensive. Yeah, I wanted some pepper jack cheese today. I was not going to pay $5 for a little chunk of it that wasn't even organic. You know, and something else that really, really shocked me, even the cheese you buy at places like Whole Foods, they were saying they tested and they had fillers in them. I am telling you from making cheese, there is no need to add anything but milk and vinegar, your salt, spices, milk, your cultures, salt, and spices. You don't need fillers in cheese, okay? Um, you really don't. I'm waiting on this to uh, heat up. I'm going to take one of these out of the box. Is that not the cutest little pasta you guys have ever seen? I mean, I know, I know, but <laughs> I wish I could make these at home without having to do it one piece of pasta at a time. <laughs> um, but anyway, just waiting on this to heat up. Um, any questions you guys have? 
So, and you notice I am not turning my pork chops down here. I'm not going to touch them. I was not kidding last night when I said it's got to be easy. Um, and I'm only hanging in the kitchen because I'm talking to you guys. Otherwise, I'd be in the living room on my computer and I'd just be letting this stuff cook. So, um, I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to make my sauce while we're waiting on this. So, let me go get another pan. Um, sometimes I do this. make your sauce if you're a little nervous about doing it uh, what time is uh, let's see farming is a big corporate business now my family used to farm for generations got too expensive so we ran our land out now sad it is sad Elizabeth that it gets expensive like that and it's you know hi Sarah um I feel like the big companies are really trying to push the family farms out, and that is really, really sad. Um, what time is dinner? 24 minutes, Stacy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go get my cup of heavy whipping cream. We could not find organic today. Um... I was really mad. Meyer had like nothing left in their milk section. So I had to get the Meyer brand. Um, I'm going to take one cup and this is just heavy whipping cream. I usually get the Horizon Organic. They didn't have it. So it'll just say heavy whipping cream. <laughs> I do need to proofread. Um, okay. I'm going to put in my cup of Parmesan cheese. Okay. I'm going to take six sage leaves. And as I said, I grew these in my garden. Best way to go, right, guys? And I always, always, what's she making? Tuned in late. Um, I am making baked harvest sage or harvest maple and sage pork chops. Sorry. Um, I am making Mediterranean sugar snap peas and I am making my creamy bow tie pasta. Ah, thanks, Stacy. Um, okay. Now, if you dry your own herbs, do yourself a favor and dry them whole. There's a reason for this. They keep more of the essential oils like this, and when you crush them, they're going to taste better in your food. So I'm going to take these in my hand. I'm just going to crush these. I'm going to do it above this because I'm going to guarantee you there's going to be stuff fall in here. Okay. Now you see what it looks like. I'm just going to toss that in. Okay. I am going to use this to mix this. I have my whisk in case I need it. I don't have any heat on yet. Okay. All right. And I'm going to get my pepper. I think I'm going to give about four. Oops, I got the salt. Okay. This is Himalayan pink sea salt. I did four of those. I'm going to do four of the pepper. Okay. I'm going to turn the heat on. I'm going to turn it on about a medium. If you're not used to doing this, um, you, um, okay, Elizabeth, I, I'm a cookbook collector, and so I have lots of, uh, cookbooks. I spend a lot of time on Pinterest, busted, of <laughs> looking at different recipes. However, I'm a very picky eater. I don't like things like onions. I don't like mushrooms. I'm okay with ground up powdered peppers, but I don't like whole pieces of peppers in my food. So what I do is I find recipes and then I alter them. Um, let me throw this away because it's bothering me. Um, I don't like trash sitting around in my kitchen. Um, but I alter the recipes and then I also have a book called The Flavor Bible 
and I will often look in it to see what flavors go with what. So it's kind of a combination. I don't really follow a recipe exactly. It's just kind of like, oh, I think this might, you know, work good. Um, so, but I do spend, I spend a lot of time online on Pinterest, like I said, looking. Um, especially for like my edible flower recipes and stuff because my mother didn't teach me this. I didn't have anybody that taught me this. The fact is, my mother, her attitude was, you don't belong in my kitchen. Get out. Um, she told me she paid the school to teach me to cook. We know how that went. Um, needless to say, when I got married the first time, I seriously could not boil water without burning it. I mean, that's no exaggeration. I just and the man I married was a five-star chef so you can imagine what that was like oh oh I know I know Elizabeth I don't know if you've seen my boards over there but I have a lot of uh decor and repurposed items I love antiques too um but yeah I'm just always um and if I get gutsy enough, guys, we're going to try some molecular gastronomy. Live! <laughs> I don't know. This might be really bad. <laughs> but we we definitely, we're going to try that. Um, we have about 18 minutes left. So I think I'm going to turn up the heat on the back burner to get that water boiling. This is still what this looks like. Um, my cheese is not starting to melt yet, as you can see. And I do have this on about a medium, but that's okay. I don't want it to melt too fast. Something that I learned from the Pioneer Woman, Re, a little pinch of uh, powdered mustard and a little pinch of cayenne pepper in any of your uh, homemade macaroni and cheese sauces. Okay, let's see. My mother tried to teach me. She's great at coming up with recipes. I didn't get that gene. <laughs> um, I bet you did. I bet you just don't know it yet. Um, I have found... Now, this is going to sound awful. Ah, Sarah has my gene. She says she loves playing res with recipes. Um, my mother thought that meat wasn't cooked unless it was black. So when I got married and the first time my husband said, I'm going to broil some steaks. And I was like, oh, no, no, don't run it. Don't run it. And I mean... It just, and I have learned. I mean, he did teach me a lot, but my grandmother's cookbook, a uh, scrapbook that I talked about last night, really helped me too. Because that was my first introduction to really recipes and stuff. I mean, I did have a lot of home ec, but I just, I feel like what we learned in school was very, very limited. Um, my mother could sew. She could have sewed anything. And I remember in high school, she bought me that Boy George uh, fashion and makeup book. And it actually has the patterns of how to make his clothes in it. And I begged my mother, please, please make me these clothes. And she'd say, where are you going to wear them? And I said, I want to wear them to school. I mean, okay, I might have got sent home, but I doubt it. And she wouldn't do it. You know, she said, well, you should have learned to sew. Well... I think it was about two, three years ago, I got that embroidery machine. <laughs> I'm blasting that Sarah has my green thumb. <laughs> but I got that embroidery machine, and I had to learn to sew. So I am still learning. Um, but I'm getting there. I mean, it was something I really didn't know. And so, like Sarah, I remember when Sarah came here. And she went on and on about my garden. She was, yeah, I, do, I know you don't hate gardening. But she went on and on about how she was never going to have a garden. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it was so hilarious. I just shook my head because I said the same thing. You know, my mother was always growing those stupid red geraniums. Hi, Maya. 
and impatience and all of these these just very common plants and that doesn't do it for me and I got into gardening um, I got into herbs and because I liked how they smelled and I was reading um, I don't even know the book I was reading but it talked about using candy mint leaves in your dishwashing water to add the scent and I went and bought a candy mint plant and yes I killed mint um, <laughs> Most people can grow it. Um, I absolutely murdered that plant. I cut it so much that there was nothing left to come back and didn't even realize I was doing that. And, okay, my sauce is starting to really turn into a very nice sauce, so I'm turning my heat down here. I have it on low. And, um, so yeah, that was a little bit embarrassing, but then I found out that there were other scented plants. And I went on this huge, all over the state of Indiana road trip to buy all of these herbs. I had mints and lemon balms and scented geraniums and just any scented plant that I could get my hands on. And that was my introduction into gardening. And then I moved. Um, I moved to a 50 acre farm. And other than the crops, he said that I could have the biggest garden I wanted. Oh, uh, I knew, I figured you would, Sarah, but that's okay. Uh, Sarah killed the chocolate tree. Um, and I had this huge garden, except I couldn't grow corn. My corn literally came out that big. Um, yeah, you can't grow corn in Indiana, right? That's me. <laughs> um, but I really learned a lot. He got me a greenhouse, and I, uh went to work at Sandpoint in Fort Wayne and it was just a great time of learning. There was Garden Web. Everybody was so generous with all their seed and plant starts that they sent and I just really dove right, right in and I've been go 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 ever since except for the past two years and I am excited about really getting back into gardening this year so really looking forward to that. Well, Sarah, you got to water it. Uh, what about the chocolate tree amazes you, Stacy? Uh, when you grow the Abroma cacao, it's a rainforest plant. So you have to flood it, literally fill the saucer up with water, and just let it drain down. And then you have to watch the soil in the pot. And when it just starts to dry and pull away from the sides, you have to flood it again. Now, normally you don't do this with plants. You don't want water uh, in the saucers. You don't want them sitting in water. But anytime you're dealing with a rainforest plant, you have to mimic the natural environment. Oh, yes, you, I guess you was about seven, wasn't you, Sarah? <laughs> have I really been growing chocolate trees that many years? Wow. Um, okay, I guess I amaze myself sometimes because I really had no idea. Um, okay, trying to get this. I've set my uh, sauce off, but I have not turned my burner off. I still have it on low um, in case I need to bring it back over here. I've got this boiling, and I don't remember. Okay, the bow ties are 12 to 14 minutes. So I'm going to do about half the box of bow ties. Probably not enough water here. Um, I think I did more than half the box. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll just have more to eat and you know I have a brand new pasta spoon that I haven't even tried aha uh -huh. um okay oh wow that is nice that is really nice have you guys ever seen one this wide I have never seen one this wide my old one that my mother gave me back when I was 18 is really skinny. Um, <laughs> I am really awful about getting rid of things. Um, like I said, if they still work, I still want to keep them around and use them. I'm just... Why rebuy something or get rid of something if it's still good? So, okay, my sauce is looking really, really good. Really good. Um, okay. You guys got any questions? Oh, I need to turn the front burner on. I'm turning it on medium. 
And we're just going to, these peas have been sitting for a while. We're just going to start cooking them. So, again, for those of you just turning in, this is uh, olive oil, basil, and garlic that is on these sugar snap peas. So, and I think I'm going to turn that rear burner up just a little bit more. Um, this is really nice. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, hi, Benita. And so just waiting for things to finish up. We have about 10 more minutes. I'm going to check on the pork chops. Oh, my. Those are looking good. <laughs> you guys, wait till you see these. Um, definitely looking good. So... I'm making a mess on my stove. <laughs> um, any questions, guys? Stacy, you never did squirrel. Now, listen here. I have ate a lot of animals, but I have never ate a squirrel. I don't intend to either. Bambi, now that's another story, okay? <laughs> but anyway, um, Stacy, you never did tell me. Uh, well, I love you too, Sarah. You never did tell me uh, what amazes you about the chocolate tree. Is it just the fact that you didn't know chocolate grew on a tree? Or, because um, I didn't know either. And that was one of my, oh, my randomness. Okay. <laughs> that was one of my, uh, I am very random, Sarah, discoveries when I got into gardening. Um the chocolate tree was one of the first ones I tried to grow along with cinnamon and clove and nutmeg and yeah um I should live in a really tropical climate I guess um but it's okay we manage and um I used to give a lot of talks about chocolate and I have been asked recently if I want to um Jerry was my tech guy, and I don't have a tech person now, and so yeah, I know it's an excuse to say that now that Jerry's gone that I can't do it, but it's kind of how I feel. Um, I just think, oh my gosh, what would I get do if I got there and I couldn't get my laptop hooked up to the projector? I do have my own projector, but I have no clue how the thing hooks up. Um, and the directions are tech geek. So, yeah. Um, suppose I could figure it out, but with Jeff working the hours that he does, um, it's a lot of work to do a presentation, a lot of stuff you have to take with you. I should do a chocolate presentation on Facebook. What do you guys think? I could totally recreate it right here in my house. Anybody interested in that? I know it's probably taking you guys a while to type. Um, so I'm trying to be patient. But yeah, I could, I could do that. I could actually do my presentations from here. and do them live. And then put them up on, on Facebook. Hmm. I have not done that presentation since I don't know. Um... I was going to order a chocolate pot this year, and time got away from me, and <laughs> you know what I want to do, and I'm going to do it one of these days, I want to make chocolate, I want to get a chocolate pot, and I want to actually scoop out those chocolate seeds, and I want to put them on banana leaves, and cover them with bananas, another banana leaf. And let those babies ferment and do chocolate all the way from the pod to the candy bar. Would that be cool? Uh, Benita, this vegetable recipe that I'm doing tonight, I already threw the packaging away. But if you go back out at Meyer, these are Mediterranean peas. They come in a package. Okay. Uh, nice Mediterranean sugar snap peas. And all it is is it's the peas. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of basil, and a little bit of garlic. 
and you just kind of saute them. Is the directions actually say two minutes, but I do about ten because I like mine softer. And then you put a sprinkling. I'll show you. This is the Parmesan cheese packet that comes with it. Oh, I hope this doesn't have wood in it. Um, but this is the amount of Parmesan cheese that comes in it. And you just sprinkle that on top. And, I, you know, guys, we should do that. I, I should email Brian and I should ask if he has any cacao pots left. And try to get one sent up here. Two. I need two. Um, I'm just afraid that we're too late in the year, and usually you have to order them December, January. I have to do overnight shipping because it's too cold for them, and then I have to fight with the post office to explain to them why they cannot put my package with the mailman, why I have to go down and pick it up. I'm sure you guys can hear these peas sautéing. Um, I just kind of, you know, just randomly move them around like that. Okay, my sauce is still staying very liquidy, so that's good. Four minutes left on the chop. Let me check them. Oh my, those look good. Okay, we're going to hope that these uh, bow tie pasta are done, and then it's literally going to be draining the bow tie pasta, tossing it in uh, to the sauce, uh, Sarah, I actually talked to Janet about writing a cookbook, and she told me that I didn't have the audience. She did. She said I needed to stick to gardening books, and I honestly don't know that I want to do another gardening book. I know that, uh, welcome back, Stacy. I know that she wants me to do a book on tea gardens, and I had actually started the book. And my plan had been, because Michi always went to Japan, to have her take some photos from me when she was over there. And I was going to talk to her a little bit about it. And then, of course, Jerry died. And the book is sitting on my computer. And to be honest with you, I don't know that that book is ever going to get published. Um, I just don't know that I want to. Um, things have changed so much. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see this, but these start to kind of swell up as they cook. And that is exactly what I want. Okay, I'm going to give them about three more minutes. And then I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to check my pasta back here. I'm going to turn my heat down on the peas because this is a little hot. Um, something that I didn't mention about the Green Earth Ozeri Pan last night is because it is a ceramic nonstick, when the heat gets on it, it just radiates. So you don't need really high heat. Um, Sarah, if you just had 10 people in here, but there would be more, not everyone has the internet to watch these videos. If not, write a book and post them. Uh, I should... I should shut my mouth right now, but I'm going to tell you guys, I got some amazing emails today. Amazing. And one of the networks that I'm with, um, I'm going to be working with the same company that people like Bon Jovi, Cher, Carrie Underwood work with. I can't say no more. <laughs> so that's your little teaser tonight. I can't say no more. Um, my mouth dropped when I opened that email, and it was legit, and, um, who knew? I have no idea how I got picked. I have no idea why YouTube chose me to work with, and I'm just flattered. I just, um... I've had some really bad things happen in my life, but um, I've had a lot of blessings too. So, um, I just take it as it comes. Oh, I don't know about a road trip, Stacy. Um, okay, I'm taking this out, and if you guys remember what I did last night,
Do those look good, guys? Sarah, I want you to go to Virginia with me to see my dad. I want to go see my dad. Okay, now I'm going to make an aluminum foil tent. I'm not going to try to touch this since it's hot. And we are just going to tent these pork chops and let them set. I'm going to turn the bow tie pasta off and go drain it. Um, I'll tell you all about pasta if you don't know this and I did not know this but I do now pasta continues to cook even after you drain the water off so if you want it to stop cooking then you need to rinse it in cold water which uh, let's see you're very welcome Stacy you know where I live not that far from you Okay, so if you want your pasta to completely stop cooking so it's uh, al dente that I'm sure I just said wrong, then you need to rinse it in cold water and then rinse it again with hot water to add the heat back. Okay, so I have added my uh, <laughs> run with the chops. <laughs> uh, I have added my pasta to my sauce and I'm just kind of mixing it up. Okay. Turning all my heat off. Supper's done. I'm going to serve it up and show it to you guys. Okay. Now, like I said, I know these didn't set 10 minutes, but frankly, I'm hungry. So, by the time I get it on my plate and get into the living room, it'll be 10 minutes. Okay. So there is my pork chop. Okay. I need to open up this Parmesan cheese packet. Don't tell Jeff. Let's see. Yes, you can do that, uh, Elizabeth. You can just boil the water, put the pasta in, and let it sit there, and it will cook itself. We actually bought one of those, whatever in the heck they're called, that was sprinkling the Parmesan cheese on the peas. And then, like I said, I'm just going to let it melt. Uh, that way Jeffrey doesn't know there's cheese on it. <laughs> but yes, you can certainly do that. And it will cook. I just love the way these little bow ties look. Just absolutely adorable. Okay. Jeffrey is a very picky eater. I mean, I really thought that I had the record for being a picky eater. He absolutely outdoes me. All right, guys, and there's supper. Um, there, is that better? You guys can see it better? All right. Hey, I'm not paying attention, but I am now, guys. And, yes, we're going to do a cobbler online one of these days. Um, I'm getting out of here because supper's calling my name and I'm going to go eat and I'll see you guys back here. Maybe tomorrow night, maybe not. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a great night, everybody. Bye.